residential school all over again in a different form. For the first time in, in, in a rural community in a number of years, school enrollment in Radican has actually increased. You see it on a regular basis that children are, are being apprehended. The children are treated as if they're their own children. Another flight outbound from Nain. All too often, these planes are carrying young children, foster children, taken away from their families, their communities. Would you like them cut up on your plate and pour the syrup on them? They often end up here, in Roddickton, nearly 1,600 kilometers to the south, in the care of one of the dozens of foster homes in the area. Here's what a typical morning looks like in one of those homes. Two brothers, preschoolers, quietly enjoy their breakfast. Wakey, wakey. A little girl, snuggled tightly in the arms of a woman we'll call Jane Smith. A heartwarming family scene. Typical morning rituals. These foster children depend on Smith for everything. It's our way of pouring a little love into something that we can do. Roddickton residents, opening their homes, their hearts, to these uprooted, innocent youngsters. They're treated as their own. They, I have friends doing this. Um, the children are treated as if they're their own children. Basically, that's how it is. They're loved, they're adored, they're involved. They're, they don't just have them and, and put them aside. It's a sobering situation. The numbers tell the story. There are 950 children in foster care in the province. 310 are Aboriginal children from Labrador. Labrador has just 6% of the province's population, but 30% of the foster children come from there. Of the 310 Aboriginal foster children, 100 of them are in care outside of Labrador. Why? There's just not enough suitable foster homes in Labrador. Richard Pomock represents Nain in the Nunatsibut government and is an outspoken advocate for children in the community. It's hard to deal with. I mean. I mean, you see it on a regular basis that children are, are being apprehended and, um, you know, every effort is being made uh, to treat, try to keep the children within the community. In many cases, the children are being concentrated right here in the Roddickton area. 45 foster homes, 55 foster children, average age, eight. A situation that began about a decade ago. The numbers have steadily increased. Angley Mayor Rudy Porter says the foster children have likely saved the school in his town. We were actually, actually expecting that the population would dwindle down and eventually the students would end up going, be going bus to Roddickton, but that hasn't happened because of the fact of the influx of the Labrador children. A new office building, headquarters for a growing contingent of social workers and support staff. Some say it's the only government service in the region that's growing. Businesses benefit. A steady flow of Labrador parents traveling at government expense for supervised visits with their children. It certainly helps uh, the economy and certainly helps people, to, you know, that uh, some income comes from this to, to help them uh, survive and live in difficult time, during difficult time. After the break, we ask the question, has fostering become an industry on the Northern Peninsula? But at this point in time, in Roddington, being a foster parent is successful. Homework on the table. A box of crayons. This could be any home. But for these children, home is complicated. They're foster kids from Labrador, now in Roddington, where some say fostering has become an industry. Jane Smith has heard the whispers. We've heard the quote, in it for the money. I don't like that because if someone's doing it for the money, you can't, for me, it's pouring your heart and soul into it. Um, so I, I don't even think of the money aspect. So are these kids from troubled Labrador homes propping up a struggling economy in rural Newfoundland? Absolutely not, says Sherry Gambin Walsh. I would say it just so happens that at this point in time, in Roddington, being a foster parent is successful. You know, people have seen each other, they mentor each other, they support each other, and it's just, it's a, it's a good uh, word of mouth. Word of mouth is our best, you know, is our best way of advertising and, and advertising to get homes for children. So if a family is very successful in fostering and another family up the street or next door sees this, they want to get engaged and involved also. Right. And that's really what's happening. 
Angley's mayor used to be a teacher. He knows kids, and he knows this town better than most. I see that these children are being well cared for. They are uh, integrated and uh, parents go be to the to end degree to accommodate them and look after them. I've even seen some of them I've been hunting and I've actually seen some of them out hunting, which I mean relates to their own Labrador uh, culture and environment. Anything else stick out for anyone that they want to ask questions on? Back in Nain, when the town's top police officer makes his monthly report to the town council, it's typically an eye-opener. For November, 139 calls for service to the RCMP. Break and enters, impaired drivers, domestic disputes, more than enough to keep seven officers busy. A lot of the uh, calls are alcohol related, I would say, and uh, there's, there appears to be a, a higher number of uh, you know, prisoners that go through the cell block. There's so many factors that um, have created the situation that we're in today. Relocation, residential schools, the lack of housing, but 30% unemployment rate within in, in the community so there's a lot of factors that come into play when we look at some of the reasons why some of our children are being you know taken from our communities and placed in, in foster homes elsewhere. Pamak estimates 30 children from Nain are in foster care outside of Labrador enough to fill nearly two classrooms at Jens Haven School. In a community of just 1400 people that represents a lot of broken homes. Children that should be showing up for school right here in Nain getting an education in communities far, far away. Here's a picture, a dysfunctional family portrait, a mother from Nain visiting her child in Roddickton for the first time in three years. Just started drinking out of nowhere and I lost my children. She blames alcohol for breaking up so many families and wishes there was more help for parents like her. I would love to reunite with us. But where she's in continuous custody, I think it's going to be hard for me to fight for. While the separation is painful, she believes her child is receiving good care. It would be good for parents to like, see how they're being taken care of and for them to realize they need to take care of their children like that too. Good care. But is it good for the future of the children? And what does it mean for their cultural identity? A complex problem. No easy answers.